Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back, and uh, congratulations for making it so far. Uh, for the ones of you who did not have the opportunity to chat with me over the last few days, my name is Gianfranco Ciacconi. I'm from the International Data Spaces Association, where I'm Chief Solution Officer. In my spare time, I help Professor Boris Otto uh, leading the Data Space Support Center. Um, I promise you I won't keep you for too long, but it's uh, uh, the opportunity to learn from the producers of the Fortrax is too valuable to, uh, to pass it by. And of course, we would like to say goodbye properly also with the uh, colleagues of the, S the SBA that have helped organizing this event. Uh, may I uh, ask uh, the uh, four colleagues that led the tracks until now, uh, please join me on stage to have a chat about how it went. And uh, please, uh, an applause for their uh, resilience up to this point of the day. Please, come, come with me. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah we, we are tired, we can sit down. Actually, I will stand because I'm short, so it doesn't look good when I sit down. Um, let's start from uh, UNITE. UNITE was the session characterized by uh, many of our uh, projects related to us in our neighborhood, let's say, with the Commission for Standardization, for Simple and so on. Um, Silvia, may I ask you to give us a glimpse of what you learned and what you would like to take back with you, both for the SEC and for the IDSA, why not? I think that the, the name of UNITE is perfect for this session because what I learned is we need to continue collaborating. So collaborate is the, the word that I bring with me. We need to collaborate with Simple. They have promised in one year, provide us Simple Open. So let's see um, how we can collaborate to knowledge sharing, but also to, to get what they are doing. Also, um, I have learned on standardization that we need to collaborate. Pierre Antoine has asked us to collaborate with um, W3C, W3C, okay, on the standardization. Also, Antonio Kuhn presented and Olds. And the, the European Commission is also supporting us on this task. Edip is going to, to guide us on the interoperability. Okay, so we need to collaborate also with EDIP on this standardization in, of the interoperability of data spaces. And then we learn um, how to measure the data spaces maturity with Christoph explaining the radar and the maturity model that has been developed by DSSC and how it has been, okay, and then one example of media data space. And, and then, um, finally, uh, we learn about open data. So we discover, I discovered almost, maybe you already know, but I discovered that we need to collaborate with them because they already have developed cool tools. For example, data ethic canvas. We ask ourselves in the projects how to address ethics on the project. So here we have some important contributions. Thank you. Thank you, Silvia. And it's also useful to remind that the, uh, the data Europa.eu, that is the open data program of the European Commission, has been already preparing a lot of educational content on data spaces as well, webinars and so on. So we are not, uh, we are an authoritative voice on this field, but there are others that are also helping a lot in this space to learn what we, what we need. Thanks, Silvia. Um, before going to, to innovate with, with David, I need to reveal a secret that is I actually put the guy in trouble uh, by conceiving the session, the main session that was in his track uh, today. Can you tell us the story and uh, together with what you learned from today? <laughs> you wanted me to tell the story of how you put me in this predicament. Yeah, we, we said something like, you know what, why don't we try to build a data space in, in one hour? Yeah, yeah and, and uh, in a role play or a psychodrama, depending on and then how you, you And then you gave me an hour and a half, and I was like, oh, it's too much time. We can build it in an hour, it's fine. But did it work? Uh, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> of course it did. I mean, absolutely, we have this, we have a business model already, uh, we, we have an organizational form, we answered all kinds of technical questions around the trust framework, semantics and data models, access and usage policies, so you can all, with uh, those of you that have electric cars, you can all plug them in, uh, confident that it will work, that all of the data will be shared, and you will be compensated for having plugged your car into the grid and helped to provide flexibility to the electric grid. And all of this with the data space at the back being the engine where, by which the data could be shared. Yeah. Uh, you had actors working with you. What was the impression? The, the <laughs> Fear was the first impression. 
No, it's a, it's a little bit of arm twisting, both before and after, because we had some actors that we, we placed, members of DSSE who were members of the help desk, helping everybody out. And, uh, and then we did manage four volunteers because we had four stakeholders that were representing different groups that we went through sort of business model development and took on the perspective of car manufacturers, the energy grid, the grid providers, the power companies, and they all played their roles very well. Uh, we gave them lots of applause because they were incredibly brave. I was very happy. Do you think we should do it again? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, great. <laughs> So I mean, everybody that wasn't there, you missed out. Everybody that was there, they laughed, they cried. It was wonderful. Okay, so we need to ask with our colleagues to make official that we have a new asset that is a, a format for role play to build a data space. That's, yeah, because that's nice. I also think it was, it was not just about trying to like, understand the real world value of, 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 the material, of the building blocks and saying, okay, what is, do they actually help us solve problems? But I think it was also useful for us for the DSSC to kind of see how people were interacting with certain templates and what questions were coming up. And it also helps us to clarify things because you know when we present, you, you have it in a nice package and it seems really great when you present it, but when you actually need to engage with it, it's a different thing. So it's one more way by which we can go a bit more pragmatical uh, than, than sometimes we, we are, but that comes with the learning, I guess. And then you had Simple on stage with you again, right? Yes. How yes. did it go? How did it go? Uh, I learned that simple will solve all problems in the world. Okay, so that, but you knew that already. So, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah I mean, uh, basically, the, there was a nice panel session that we had um, where they went through challenges, opportunities, and expectations. And it was, I mean, you know, I was kind of looking at it as the, the outsider MC, but it was really interesting to see that a lot of the discussion wasn't so much around the technical elements of, of what this middleware will be, but in terms of like, they were talking about mindset and cultural changes that would be some of the challenges, engaging with the open source community and, and how they would contribute to Simple. And so it was, it was a, a, a lot of organizational discussion and legal discussion, not just technical. So it was, it was quite broad ranged and, and uh, I mean an interesting kind of starting point to say, okay, here's, here are the problems we're looking to solve, here are the challenges we have, but really opportunities around sort of cross-sectoral interoperability and, and how Simple would pragmatically help bring that about. But I guess and we need to reiterate our wishes for the new project to find a fit very, very quickly. Yeah. Thanks, David. Thank you. Um, Sile, uh, Danielle, so you were working on Adopt, uh, engaging the data spaces that we supported until now um, and, and capturing the last drop of knowledge we can extract out of them. Uh, Sila, can I start from, with you? How did it go? I will come to that, but actually uh, it would okay. be really good to uh, follow up on uh, what the David said uh, and in terms of the um, role play and also the, the focuses that stayed in the, in the discussions because I think uh, a lot of the aspects when we are working on the, on the infrastructures and different kind of uh, models, et cetera, we actually forget about the soft sides that we actually need to connect people to people to understand what do we think about it. There has been also different types of discussions what even data spaces are here, right? So it, during these events, we're also connecting and trying to make those, uh, um, uh, yeah, find common understanding. So as role plays, uh, these are useful mechanisms to actually facilitate that. Um, and one of the things now coming to, uh, to the session where uh, I was and, and was curating that, uh, one of them uh, was uh, looking at synergies, the other one on, on language uh, data space. And uh, in the synergies part, it was actually mentioned that the uh, language they, uh, sorry, the uh, data space for culture heritage, um, Europa, uh, Europeana is providing a lot of trainings actually for the different types of participants as support mechanisms also. For, and role plays could one, be well uh, one of the uh, support services to really help also that uh, uh, soft side of actually coming to common understanding, uh, actually understanding what those uh, different types of solutions mean for my context and for my organization. So maybe that's something that we should, uh, should also look at in the, in the future um, and uh, just uh, support that, um, that uh, function um, to actually move ahead. But going a little bit then on, on the topic of uh, synergies that we discussed in the session, um, what I would uh, just highlight is that uh, there is a sincere uh, motivation and openness to actually look for those uh, synergies across the different sectors. 
But there's, I think, also um, very, it shows that there's a lot of uh, uh, humility. Uh, they're humble to also approach that this won't be easy because there's a lot of uh, legacy in diff different types of sectors. Uh, there's a lot of different types of solutions already deployed and people are not so easy to right away cross these off or start to use different things. So the, the difficult job to actually find those ways, how do we actually make those different types of solutions also interoperable in the context of data spaces. But, uh, the other point that I find uh, was really interesting is that um, we should also be critical uh, about data spaces. It's maybe not the, it's a little bit controversial in this uh, surrounding when we're of, of course looking at and uh, being very excited about the different types of uh, data spaces, but we should also understand that like, just because there is now data space, it won't uh, solve all of the problems immediately. Um, and we should also, somebody mentioned that uh, the, the saying that the old, uh, sorry, the, the new brush is always better than the old brush type of thing, right? So we should uh, stay also critical in the uh, sense of, uh, of data spaces and the solutions and ask difficult questions from ourselves when we are actually iterating these, uh, these forward. And maybe just uh, referencing also the, the session on the language data space, it was uh, just really great to see um, the long history of decades of work actually that is going into building those solutions um, and uh, the um, appreciation that we shouldn't also lose that uh, with those different uh, uh, solutions that are coming up uh, now um, and really making sure that it actually is working from, um, from the the kind of infrastructure level, but is also working for the industry and their need for, uh, for data. So I hear also the word patience coming through in a way. So not, not only accepting the limitations of perhaps the kind of technology or business models that are not yet mature, but also accepting the fact that it may take time to get to a point where we are ready without necessarily this being a good reason to just stop and watch what the others are doing. And Daniel, what did this picture look like from your side? Well, I would like to uh, a bit on top of Silly because yesterday we ran also a very nice session with the uh, language, media, cultural heritage, and skills. And it's true that each of them presented their own challenges and what they are doing, but also from my point of view, uh, I try to also to establish these kind of synergies because as you can imagine, those four sectors fit quite well with each other. And actually we found several ways of, co of collaboration. I know it's not easy, and, but I agree with you that they are pretty very much willing to, to cooperate with each other and they also rely very much in data space support center. And they, they, they told me it explicitly, how we can you know, provide this common ground, how we can also make it easier for them to, to keep in touch with each other. And from this, this perspective, I think uh, it makes completely sense to, to move forward on this, on this path. So very interesting. We can discuss later on about how to proceed, yeah. Anything else you captured that you would like to? Well, yeah, it was yesterday. Um, yeah, today uh, the adopt, uh, okay, adoption is quite broad term. Uh, in, in this track, we um, address exactly four phases, four terms. Okay, uh, strategy, uh, uh, challenge, uh, value, and sustainability. And basically we discuss about those four, let's say, stages or, or steps. And first, uh, we got a very nice, uh, very nice talk from uh, Giorgio Micaletti from IDC. He presented the, the last uh, report on the data economy for the European Commission that I think is, was published in 2022. So based on figures and data from 2020 to 2023, they, have, they are, they are half-forcing until 2030. And it's nice because you see it there, we, we are eager to listen to, to hear KPIs. So you can there see real KPIs about the data economy. So he proposed uh, three scenarios, the baseline scenario, uh, high uh, growth scenario, but also the, the, the challenge scenario. And based on, that, based on that, you can have a view, more or less, okay, what, what, where, we are, where we are going also. And it's important to see uh, where, we are, where we're coming from, because also it's very important how data economy grows a lot during the last years. Now we are achieving this, let's say, uh, flatter stage. And we, I think we have also to consider that. So it was very interesting, also providing different factors that affect also the data economy. And it was a really nice, really nice uh, discussion, and also you can have the, the report online. Then uh, we also ran a, a session with different initiatives, also to collect testimonies, how they are addressing those challenges, and how is the value that they are proposing. And it's, it's nice that you can identify common uh, challenges, common requirements, but at the same time, very uh, 
sector-based uh, challenges. In this case, for instance, uh, from the energy, you, have, you identify the silos is a big, big challenge. From the transport, it's important to provide the user this seamless connection and this journey satisfaction. We have also mobility. We have also um, another that uh, we're discussing about that. And finally, we run a panel with a specific uh, profile. We have uh, the view from the European Commission, JRC, because they are also having this holistic view from the policymaker. We have also DSCC, represented by Clara, where we, pro we presented this uh, report that we have uh, produced for the future of data spaces. We have also the view from the member state, from Estonia. And it's really nice how they are uh, progressing. And also we learn from first hand, OK, the, the same problems or specificities from the public uh, sector, but also from this specific country. And then we have also uh, a, a representative from the uh, Green Deal data space that are going to finish right now. But also we learn also how they are, um, again, setting the scene for the future developments. So really interesting, difficult to summarize in just a few minutes. But um, yeah, it was uh, nice, amazing. It's nice also to hear how, in, in some of the wording you've all been using, it, that there's also some degree of history. So perhaps over the last couple of years, we've been talking uh, what we're doing in data spaces, but before that, it was data sharing, and before that, open data, and this, the efforts of so many other programs and initiatives to get to a point where we become interoperable and working together. Uh, other parts of the commissions that have been working with us and close to us, Digital believe, is in the room, for Interoperable Europe, uh, the Open Data Program that was part of one of your tracks. All of this is really coming together in a nice picture. I actually may wonder why we don't meet each other more often than we do these days. But thank you for all of your work until now, and also not just today. Uh, a last round of applause for my four colleagues, please, and, uh, and please uh, capture everything you described so we can offer it to the audience that could not be with us today. Thank you, guys. And the only thing that separates you from going back to your homes is actually the uh, greetings to close the event. I invite with me on stage uh, uh, Lars Nagel, uh, uh, CEO of the International Data Space Association. Um, uh, where, where are you? Uh, Uri Kale uh, for uh, Gaia X. Uh, um, we know that unfortunately uh, um, uh, Ana Garcia had uh, to leave, but we have. Uh, Daniel uh, supporting us as uh, technology lead for AI and data. And I don't know if Andrea is back in the room. We looked for him before for fiber. Uh, well, I will cover a little for him. Thank you, guys. So just not to keep our audience too much there, I will ask you uh, two things. The first is what you're taking home with you from everything you learned in the last three days. Uh, possibly in the light of what you would expect to be one year from now when we meet again uh, for the next symposium. And the second, just a reminder for our audience that the, the, open, uh, sorry, the data sharing circus, the data spaces circus, does not end with us. There will be events uh, from Citra and others and our own uh, over the next few months. And I would like you to remind us of what opportunity have we got to stay in touch. But let's start from last close to me. What I do take home. Um, that we are a great community. There's a lot of energy here. Um, compared to last year, we have made huge progress. And for me, the reflection is uh, we are, so my feeling is we are complete. So last year, uh, Data Spaces Symposium, uh, things were missing. Uh, some ideas were missing, but also players were missing. Um, so we were lacking like uh, um, business representatives. That has definitely changed that year, um, and uh, it's well, it's good to have uh, very omnipresent, so to say, the simple colleagues. Um, so now, with uh, the the foundation over the last years built by the DSBA partners and others, uh, channeled into the Data Spaces Support Center, and now being brought to life uh, via Simple, this is like a complete storyline, and I think. Well, it's there, everyone was there, that was really good. Also to see that we have now quite a consistent and joint strategy on standardization. Um, and now, yeah, well, in one year, we will see how far we got. But um, uh, I'm super confident because now everyone's at the table and we speak together and that's all. So we're playing an ecosystem game. The most important thing is let's create transparency, let's talk with each other and let's make things happen.
and we put it on record for next year. We, we have the recording of this room, so we can use it against you later. Uh, Ulrich, uh, can I ask you the same of you? How, what will you take home from these three days? And um, yeah, what really uh, see for yourself in one year from now at the next symposium? Yeah, for me, it's clear that we are growing uh, more and more together. We are not only showing and demonstrating a common blueprint, a tech conversion, but also a conversion as a team. This includes uh, not only the few who are standing here on stage, but all of you who are here. And thank you to all of you who, stay, who are staying with us till the last moment of this event, not of our endeavor, because that will take us uh, several years, I'm pretty sure, and we have the potential uh, really to create a momentum and the next level of data management uh, based on European values and not only used in Europe, but uh, used globally. Adopting to uh, the regulations in other ecosystems, collaborating, interoperating with them, but we are able here to really create a momentum. But uh, let me also take the opportunity to invite you to, um, to other events, because all of our partners, we will uh, also continue to do um, own events. So. In the case of Gaia Exit, will be the Tech X event and the Hackathon, uh, where you can get your hands dirty. That will be May 24 and 25th in Luxembourg. And uh, the next Gaia X Summit will be on November 14 and 15th. This was, was confirmed today um, in Helsinki. So uh, we will go to Finland, a bit more north in Europe. That's it from my side. Thank you, Ulrich. Uh, Daniel, what about you? Okay, I think one of the words that I have uh, heard a lot here in, in the, the event has been collaboration. Uh, because it's true that collaboration is at the basis of data spaces, so at the end we are sharing data, but also it's at the basis of how to build data spaces. So I realized that uh, collaboration among the, ho the whole community is needed, otherwise we are not uh, succeeding. Uh, and I think this event has been a very good example of collaboration. We know that it took a lot of effort for all of us to organize the event, but I think it, wor it, wor uh, it, is, it was worth the effort. And absolutely, uh, I think this is the, the reason for the success of this event. So collaboration is key, okay? But also, uh, today, we have the pleasure to announce the DSCC Blueprint 1.0. And uh, again, for me, as because I have been very, very much involved in the expert group and also in the producing the Blueprint, and I have to say that has been amazing. Amazing the work that all the experts have, uh, have done, collaborating with each other, and it has been also a very nice example of collaboration. So I would like to emphasize this point to keep working together uh, with all of us, all of you, the whole community, because on the one hand it's key, but on the, on the other hand it's quite, uh, quite inspiring, this uh, way of working. From BDBA, it uh, has been a pleasure to be here, absolute, absolutely. Uh, you know that we organize our EBDBF uh, regularly every year. But now, this event has been, uh, okay, the opportunity to share with others, uh, give our members the opportunity to learn from what others are doing, uh, all the, the four associations, but also our, this project. And it has been very valuable to, to discuss about uh, topics that are in, interesting for us, like, you know, AI, data quality, data value generation, all those things. And again, I would like to, to keep this uh, collaboration together. And yeah, we are also from BDBA, we are organizing the next event. So we, have, we don't have to wait for next year to, to meet. <laughs> we have many, many opportunities. European Big Data Value Forum in October in Budapest. So uh, another nice city to, to go there. And I hope we con will continue the discussion in those different events we are organizing. Thanks a lot, Daniel. And uh, Andrea, bad boy, you were not around at the right time, but you're forgiven. What about you? What are you taking home with you? And where do we meet Fireware next time? Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for sharing your feedback. Um, let me close with a usual stereotype. I was out because I found a good espresso cup uh, on the <laughs> other side of the road because there was no espresso here. But anyway, um, let me thank ev every association uh, in the SBA. Let me thank the SSC for supporting all the organizers of the event. They have done a fantastic job. Um, my take uh, from this event is alignment. And considering I've got a business mindset, but I'm very, very in love with technology, I believe now it's time to give proofs. Proofs that give a value to what we have done so far, 
to the roadmap we have for the next year and onward. So I'm expecting us and our ecosystems to collaborate and create something that demonstrates the value of our vision. Um, and this is going to be something that has to be also, and that's my expectation, has to be acknowledged and buyed in by uh, any kind of end customers from our ecosystem. So this is what I'm going to, um, to, to, to commit on together with my um, fellow uh, CEOs uh, for, for the next year. And I'm looking forward to having all of you at the Fiber Summit, uh, scheduled for September 18th and 19th in Napoli, Italy. Um, pizza for everyone. <laughs> no risk of no, not finding coffee there. <laughs> I hope that will be a good exp espresso there, yes, indeed. Um, the Fiber Summit, compared to the past editions, will be a bit renewed. Not changed, but just revamped, as I mentioned, uh, during each and every closing of this uh, amazing event and during the day one of the um, Data Space Symposium dedicated to my uh, association. I want to hear from uh, the ecosystem, not just the community. I want everybody who's interested in what we're doing, who is exciting, excited about uh, the vision we have, to share their feedback and contribute. And this is what the Fiber Global Summit is going to bring also to the SSC and the SBA community. So I look forward to having all of you there. Thank you for participating. Thank you for supporting us and giving feedback and hearing our voice. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. And this is a good segue also for me, for what I'm taking with me, that is the curiosity of working together. That is, we don't, I don't think any of us have all the answers. It's something that you probably have heard me saying many times. Um, I still think that we do not have all the answers, but I believe also we have a lot of potential to find them uh, through the unity we described, uh, the listening element, the curiosity. Uh, and I see Lars anxious to say something, but uh, let me say, say first, the next time you will see the SSC instead, um, well, in person, a bit more difficult perhaps, but every uh, last Thursday of the month, we organize the Inside Series webinars, that is probably the best stage uh, to, to come and visit us and do not be shy if you want to ask or suggest what topics we should cover in those occasions. We are not doing it for ourselves, we're doing it for you. Um, Lars, what did you want to say? I should answer two questions. So I would like to invite you on 8th of May to Bilbao to the Bydata Forum, uh, which is uh, our next event and I think a very good next step uh, after the uh, event in Helsinki. Um, to, to really well, continue the good energy from here. Thank you. And yeah, the event of Helsinki Lars is referring to is the Nordic Data Festival on the 10th of April, uh, particularly in a few weeks from now. So in case you really can't wait to meet us again, you, you have that many opportunities to do it. Um, before we close, the inevitable and mandatory thanks to the organizers of this event, Anna Butraghi, Jaskin uh, Dudler, and all the teams that worked to make this happen, possibly in a shorter time frame that you would normally do. And uh, I think we should uh, include uh, into the thank you also the team here of the Darmstadtium. I oh, seldom uh, or really rarely uh, experience such a professional and flexible team, excellent. Uh, uh, infrastructure here, so thank you to all of you who made it possible. And with this, uh, you have my blessing to go home. Uh, thank you again for being with us, and uh, build data spaces, please. Thank you. <laughs>